Hey there, friends, and welcome to another episode of Ponder and Practice. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so happy to have you here. I hope that you are doing well. What a bananas few weeks that it has been. Um, before I get into today's topic, I do want to call out the fact that COVID numbers in the U.S. are really intense right now. And so I know that we're all so tired of this and that we are exhausted and have varying degrees of anxiety about different things. And I implore you, please, 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 um, if you have something that you like want to run out of the house to do and it is not essential, stay home, please, <laughs> as much as you can. And of course, as ever, you know, wear your face coverings as you're out and about doing those essential things that you have to absolutely do. Um, but, you know, keep your space and please take precautions and stay safe and stay home just as much as you possibly can. Okay, <laughs> so now that that's out of my system, um, today I am talking about the role of gratitude in boundary setting. And there are two primary ways that gratitude plays into setting really elegant and artful boundaries. And... Gratitude is a practice that has been in my life off and on in different forms for a while, um, and I sort of put it down and pick it up as I go. And, you know, if you don't have a gratitude practice, I highly recommend that you begin one. Uh, and what I find works really well is that I journal most days, and then either at the beginning of that or the end of that, I'll just have a section that says gratitude and I'll just make a list of some specific things that have happened in the last 24 hours that I'm grateful for. Um, and that puts me in that space. So if you don't have a gratitude practice yet, I encourage you to pick one up in whatever way makes sense for you. Um, another way to do this is through like a walking meditation where with each step you consider something you're grateful for or even just think to yourself, I am grateful. That's another really beautiful way to practice gratitude. And then of course, sitting meditation, of course, is another beautiful way to take this practice on. So it's never a bad time to start practicing gratitude in a way that makes sense for you. Now, in terms of boundary setting... Why in the world am I talking about gratitude, right? These seem like very disparate concepts, potentially. And they're really not because I'm coming at the concept of boundary setting from a place of, like I said, being really elegant and artful about it. And I'm someone who operates from a, from a heart-centered place as much as I possibly can. And if you're listening to this, I imagine that you similarly operate from a heart-centered place. You have values that are really important to you and your relationships and connections are really important to you. And so gratitude plays a role in this, right? And if we're setting boundaries in line with our integrity, which if you're listening to this, you are setting boundaries in line with your integrity, you're learning to do that, um, or interested in learning to do that, right? You're somewhere along the way on your path to learning to set boundaries within your integrity so that you can have deeper connection and more profound work and satisfaction in every area of your life. Um, gratitude is a piece of this. You cannot, I think, really be in integrity without having some sense of what you're grateful for and allowing that to permeate into everything that you do. Um, so let's start off. Well, first, so I'm going to talk through two different things. Like I said, the first aspect is the internal stuff that happens with gratitude. And then the second piece is an external piece that happens with gratitude, practically speaking, when you're actually setting a good boundary, when you're actually using your no on purpose. So internally, when you have a gratitude practice, whether that's journaling or walking meditation or sitting meditation or whatever it is, um, having a sticky note on your computer, um, as just a general aside, I am always putting sticky notes on my computer and like I'll pull off the ones that have sort of permeated and then I'll put a new one down. So um, that's another favorite practice of mine in case you're looking for ways to keep new habits top of mind. I love sticky notes on my laptop. Um, but your gratitude practice makes more space in your life for the things that matter. Um, and 
what I mean by this is that as you practice focusing on the things in your life that you're grateful for, as you practice calling out beautiful moments throughout the day, maybe there's something or someone who has come into your life that you identify that your life is richer for the experience of that. Um, Maybe there's a situation that's unfolding in a way that is better than you could have predicted. As you call out, explicitly call out these things and articulate to yourself that you're grateful to them, this makes those things get bigger because wherever you're focused, that's where your energy is going to go. And so if you're focused on the things that you're grateful for, those things magnify in a really profound way. Now, this is not to say that if you have a gratitude practice, there aren't going to be things that come up that you would really rather not, of course. It does mean, though, that as you practice, you'll start looking for more things that confirm your bias. And so putting yourself into a state of gratitude programs your brain, it kind of programs your nervous system to look for confirmation of that feeling and to look for confirmation of that thought. And so that's how it magnifies, is that you start to, on purpose, and with, admittedly, some degree of effort and As someone with a gratitude practice, some days it takes a lot of effort. Some days it's a lot easier, but you start on purpose and with a little bit of effort or a lot of effort in calling out what are those things that you're really grateful for? What are those things that you're so glad they showed up? And oh my gosh, how better is your life for the experience? Then your brain picks up on that. The subconscious part of your brain picks up on that and it says, oh, we're doing this. Okay, and then it will start to attune your conscious awareness to more things that you feel grateful for, that you enjoy, that you're happy are in your life. As this happens, the other piece is that you start to get some clarification about your values. I really love journaling for this reason because I'm the kind of person that as I'm writing something, and I think we all are this kind of person, but some of us um, are more adept and comfortable with it than others, but as I'm writing, I pay attention to what I'm writing. So as I'm writing gratitude, I can notice like where do these things fall in my life and how do they reflect my values and what I choose to prioritize. So if you're someone you know, maybe as you're starting your gratitude practice, the things that keep coming up are relationships. And I had this happen in my journal this morning, actually, as I was writing. And it was, you know, this person showed up to a networking event and I hadn't seen them in a long time. This person shared something on social and what a joy that was to hear their story. And like, that was really inspiring. And then it's, oh, like I got to message this person and talk to them. Oh, I have this call scheduled with this other person. And so it was all, not all, there were some other things in there too, but primarily I sat back and I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, these are all relationships. These are all connection-based things. And so if you have this kind of practice and you can notice what are the things that are coming up that are sparking a feeling of gratitude most easily, that points you back to, oh, my values are this, this, and that. So in the case of the example I just gave, something that I really value is meaningful connection. Um, I hate small talk so much and networking is something that still stresses me out. And at the same time, as I nurture and as I create and nurture these connections and develop a network that is in alignment with who I am, what I find happens is that as I see these people and as they kind of cycle through over the weeks and the months, I am so grateful that they're there and those connections and people enrich my life in a way that is really special and it makes me feel really lucky and blessed. And so I am sure that if you take the time to do this practice and make it a regular occurrence, you're going to notice some themes and you're going to notice the things that bring gratitude to your body and to your mind more easily than others. Um, So... There's that piece. 
Um, as your values then come into alignment, as you're practicing gratitude, as you're noticing the themes of and allowing that to point you back to articulating really clearly what your values are, what's going to happen is that you're going to realize, oh, am I actually saying yes to these things? Or am I shutting myself off from these things and saying no to them because I'm saying yes to other things? For example, so in my example, in what I was saying before, um, my gratitude list this morning was very based in connection. And that's something that I know that I value. Well, as I say yes and no to things, as I go through my days, does that translate into what I take on and what I don't take on? So if somebody comes to me and they have like they're trying to sell me something and it's a one-off, like whatever, maybe that thing would be really useful, but I don't have a genuine connection with that person or I don't feel like what they're selling me is necessarily going to enhance my ability to connect with other folks and really nurture that value that I have. I'm not going to say yes to it. I'm going to say no to it. Um, or, you know, if I take it back to my habits, if I... If connection really matters to me and in order for me to connect with folks most meaningfully, I'm severely introverted, like really intensely introverted. And so for me to connect well with someone, I have to really guard my alone time. I have to be super protective of that. And so that means that, you know, if I say yes to some social, like a Zoom happy hour or something, yeah, I could do that, but is that gonna feed back into my value of connection? Maybe a little bit, depending on who is at that Zoom happy hour, which, by the way, I've never done, but I hear about. Um, but I do really well, and I know that my connections grow most um, effectively when I do one-on-one -on -one conversations. When we have, when there's like a little bit of, you know, text, text-based direct messaging back and forth, and I'm like, hey, I'd love to talk to you in real time. Let's hop on a call. And then I sit and I talk with that person one-on-one, -on -one, right? That's when my connections thrive. That's when I'm really able to nourish those relationships. And so if I say yes to a to happy hour on Zoom or whatever, one, I'm not gonna get enough sleep probably. And two, I'm gonna be emotionally <laughs> drained because I was at that event. And so then if I have some calls the next day, I've in effect said no to those other connections because I said yes to that happy hour. Does that make sense? Essentially, it's a way of practicing gratitude and allowing that to clarify your values and then letting that guide what you say yes or no to. It's a way to ensure that you're using your resources in the way that really does align with your values. And resources doesn't have to be money. It can be time. It can be energy. Um, it can be attention effort, whatever it is. So that's the first piece. The second piece is that as you practice gratitude, and depending on the format in which you do it, as you practice gratitude, what ends up happening is that if you pay attention, you notice your body feels a very specific way. Excuse me. Something that really differentiates the work with that I do with folks is that I am so focused on trying on supporting them and getting really in tune with their bodies because your body gives you up to the second real time information. It doesn't lie to you. It processes information faster than your conscious mind can. And so the more in touch with your body you can be, the better able you will be to say yes or no in a way that is in alignment. I've said yes when I should have said no. I've said no when maybe I should have said yes. I can tell you that this is honestly the best, truest way to get to the heart of setting artful boundaries is being so in tune with your body and acknowledging what those sensations are. So what does gratitude have to do with this? As you're in a practice of gratitude, as you bring yourself mentally and emotionally into a state of gratitude, your body follows suit, right? And of course, you can go top down or bottom up. So I'm talking about a top down approach, where you start with your mind, it goes in your emotions, and then you notice, oh, what's happening in my body as I'm manipulating my emotions on purpose. Your body's going to feel a really specific way when you're in a state of gratitude. It just is. Just like your body feels a really specific way when you're really angry. Or your body feels a very specific way when you're stressed or when you're joyful or when you're content. 
So a state of gratitude, practicing this, and then taking that a step further and noticing what are the sensations that I experience physically is going to provide a contrast to those moments when something is showing up that does not feed into your values or does not feed into something that is um, an enrichment to your life. And so I'll work with folks on both sides of this and something I often do with clients is have them call out like, okay, when you're in a space where you feel really pressured and when you feel like you can't say no, how does that feel in your body? How does that sit in your body? And we'll walk through head to toe, what are all the sensations that come up in that moment? Because that then becomes your red flag, oh hey, something's off here. And then we'll contrast that with, how does it feel when you're in a state of gratitude? When you feel like you've said yes to something that really resonates with you, how are those physical sensations different? It really matters and it really makes a difference because things happen fast and a lot of times folks struggle to say no because they feel like they're caught in the moment and they, they don't know how to slow it down, but they can feel it in their body. And if you can then use that information, use those sensations, that then becomes a bottom-up approach, right? You're paying attention to your body, you notice these uncomfortable sensations, and then you can say, oh, right, I know this, like this is my flag I'm supposed to take like be aware of, let me take a few minutes and think about this. Let me take a breath. Like maybe I can get off this call and call and get back in touch another time. Maybe I can reach out in a different way in a few weeks. Like I need to think about this for a minute and get myself centered and figure out like, what do I actually want to do? What actually makes sense for me? So that's the second piece. So first, having a gratitude practice helps you really articulate what your values are. Um, gratitude, things that you're grateful for point to your values, which then can guide what you're saying yes and no to and whether or not those yeses and nos are appropriate based on all the information you've gathered. And then being in a state of gratitude puts your body in a very specific space. It puts your body physiologically in a very specific state. And paying attention to that provides so much great information, especially if you can then contrast that sensation with a moment when you feel like, oh my god, I can't say no, I'm going to feel so guilty, like I just have to say yes because I just need to get out of the situation. No! Right? It's very different. It's a very different feeling. And so just, this is a really good way, having this contrast is a really good way to start to get in touch with your body and use those signals practically. The third thing, and this is where we get into the practical stuff, right? So usually when I'm talking to folks, when I give webinars or talks and whatever, the first piece is always just you, right? There's no one else involved in anything that I just said. Um, it's, mo it's all internal work. It's all something that you can do on your own. You need no one else to do it. And it's going to have a tremendous impact. The second piece is, okay, so we've, and this is like that, the first piece is the ponder part, right? The second piece is the practice. So then you, you got to bring that out into the world. You have to use that information and let it manifest in some kind of way. And gratitude is really useful with boundary setting, practically speaking, because people like to be appreciated. I don't know if you've ever done a job or taken something on and it was out of the way for you. It wasn't necessarily something you wanted to do, but you wanted to be helpful and so you took it on. And then the response you got was, okay, maybe there was like a thank you that was sort of a throwaway line. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> it doesn't feel good to not be appreciated. Um, Whereas if you contrast that with maybe you took something on and it was out of your way, same kind of situation, you didn't really want to do it, but you wanted to be helpful. And then what you get back is, oh my gosh, thank you so much. This was such a huge help. I super appreciate your work. Very different feeling, right? And so when we're talking about the context of saying no on purpose, a lot of people say yes because they want to be generous and be helpful. And also, 
saying no is a way of being generous and helpful, even if it doesn't feel that way. Knowing that people like to be appreciated helps soften that blow for everyone involved. Sometimes it's not a blow at all, but it still, it cultivates goodwill between you and the person that you're interacting with. And so I have a formula that I give folks for boundary setting, and it's two, three steps depending on where you are. But the first thing is always say thanks. Thank you. You know, if if something comes across your desk or into your inbox that's like, hey, can you do this thing? And you really can't or you don't want to or it's not aligned, whatever it is. Writing back or, you know, being on the phone and saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm honored, right? You're showing that person I so appreciate that you thought of me. I really appreciate that you asked me. I see you. I understand that maybe it wasn't easy to ask me. Maybe there are a million other people you could have asked, but you chose me. Thank you. Um, It's a really beautiful way of honoring someone and honoring yourself at the same time and really calling clear and focused attention into that specific moment. So that's why I like to talk about gratitude and boundary setting. Um, I think, I can't remember her name, and I meant to look this up before I started recording and I forgot, but um, there is someone who says, she talks about saying no, and all that she says that she will say to someone is, thanks, no. (laughs) And that has stuck with me because it's the same thing, like, oh, thanks for asking, no. Um, and sometimes that doesn't feel quite right for everyone. And so, um, the work that I do with folks is figuring out like, what is the language that makes sense for you? What language does feel genuine for you? Um, and so we'll, we'll play out the rest of the formula, um, and then generate what I call stock phrases so that folks can have them. These are phrases they just practice and like have on the tip of their tongue. And so whatever situation comes up, they can spit them out at a moment's notice. Um, and actually it's really beautiful. I did... My first webinar I did a couple months ago, and I saw some folks who were in that on a networking call last week, and um, a couple people said, oh my gosh, I have my stock phrases like pinned up next to my computer because they're that helpful, and they it provides some structure, it makes them feel safe, it helps them know that they do in fact have the words that they need to be able to say no in a way that really does honor the person that they're talking with and also themselves and the person they're talking with could be a client their boss a coworker, a team member um you know even family members it doesn't really matter but i find it's really helpful to have some stock phrases on tap so something that you can start to use to build your own stock phrases is factoring in that gratitude first up top thank you so much for thinking of me i so appreciate that you reached out. I haven't talked to you in so long. It's so good to hear from you. Um, You know, having these kinds of things in your initial um, response to someone makes a really big difference. Because, and folks just like to be appreciated. Like, no matter what else comes after that, if I get a note from someone that says, oh my gosh, thank you so much for this thing. I'm like, oh, that's great. Like, I'm so happy and I feel really appreciated. And then whatever else comes after, I'm like, okay, like, that's fine. Um, So, Make use of that. Use that, not in a disingenuous way. I mean, I would never... Authentic connection is what this is all about. And so obviously, you know, you have to find something that is actually true to say thank you for. But there's always something. There's always something that you can say thank you for. Um, So use it. Factor that into your interactions and conversations and as you're setting good boundaries. Um, If you are interested in getting access to those stock phrases that I just mentioned, um, if you go to ponderandpractice.com slash boundaries, you can get access to the webinar that I did that I referenced a minute ago. Um, And also there's like a five-step guide. And then I have to put up, also there will be a link there um, by the time this is posted that will take you to the workbook. It's called... um, building better boundaries and it walks you through the whole process that I use with folks um, in a workbook setting it's like 10 bucks Um, it works it walks you through it so that you can figure out like what is at the root of your difficulty with saying no where's the anger showing up where's resentment showing up Um, 
where do you excel at setting boundaries? How can you transfer those skills? Like it gets really into the weeds and really kind of deep, kind of fast. Um, and the people who have used it have feedback, like they got to some stuff that they didn't even realize was there, um, which is kind of cool and very exciting. And um, if you don't know it's there, you can't do anything about it. But once you know something is there, then you have the opportunity to now make a new choice and now move in a new direction and have more and more and more intentionality um, and purpose in what you do. And of course, this leads just to better connections, more meaningful interaction, more satisfying work, all these beautiful things that you deserve. You deserve them, my friends. Um, the last thing I'll say before I wrap up here is that I am going to be giving a, another webinar, um, and that is going to be coming up on Tuesday after this is released. So it's going to be on, let's see, Tuesday, November 17th, and it's going to be at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can find the link to this on artfulboundaries.com. Up at the top, there's a link that says November webinar, and that'll take you directly to the page so you can register for this. Um, but what I'm going to be talking through is boundary setting through the holiday season. <laughs> we are still, many of us, in close quarters. There are questions arising in terms of safety, group gatherings. Um, and so my wish for you is that you stay healthy and safe. And also I am aware that it can be really hard to say no to someone. It can be really hard to get that invitation from someone to some event that you don't know what the situation is going to be. Like, is there going to be distance? Are there going to be face coverings? Like, am I going to be safe? this and that, it's really hard to get those invitations and just saying no. Um, so that's a large piece of what I'm going to be talking through. But also, you know, if you're in close quarters with folks, how do you set good boundaries that maintain those relationships in a workable way? Um, and in a way that you get through the end of the year and get through the holiday season, um, you know, hopefully not in any worse any worsening of those relationships, but improved care and improved love and connection and, um, you know, nurturing of both yourself and the people around you. So again, that's going to be on Tuesday, November 17th. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and you can get the link to that at artfulboundaries.com. And then there's a little link at the top. Um, I think as you look at the page, there's a button at the top right that says schedule and then right next to that on the left like it's one thing over towards the left it says november webinar and if you click there you can register for the webinar and it's gonna be so much fun i'm really excited to share um so yeah all right friend that's all i have for today um you know i'm just gonna say this again because it really matters to me and public health is so important um, and COVID is a thing, and I know that the caution fatigue is so real. It is so real. And I know, you know, I have close friends and family members who are like, I just need to see people in person because I'm going bonkers. And I get it. I really do. But this is not going to last forever. And the more you can stay home and sort of keep inside your limited size bubble, the better off. Um, we all will be over time and the sooner we can hopefully get things under control All right, so with all of that said happy Friday Enjoy your weekend. I hope that you have some rest and some great things to look forward to um, And I will talk to you again on the next episode. Bye <laughs>